Galway had won the cup again. The president was there to see a delighted Coloran receive the trophy for his team after a fine win, one goal ten, against nil seven. I suppose I was very interested in football from the age of four or five. It was all football. You were going playing football every Sunday. During the week, you'd be playing with the club and the camaraderie of the lads and the girl of the lads. It was a pleasure. I suppose I was very lucky to come up at that time and I was lucky to be on that team the way it happened. The only good thing I had, I knew I had a good shot and <laughs> I'd never get too many passes. If I saw the goal post, I, 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 I confidently in myself, I knew we could put them over. Keenan scored for Galway. There were happy times in the 60s because you could always say we were there and we did it and we enjoyed it while we were there. We never taught a three in a row, I don't think, but it's just to get over this one. And we'd have won the four in a row if we had to go to America, the league final in 67. Then we had to go to London, very tired team. But that's how it was. We were married in the 68 and family came along and that's why I quit in 1970. I had 10 years playing, and I thought it was enough. A foul against Kerry. Free kick to Galway. The kick is taken by Cyril Dunn and it's another point for Galway. I suppose every young fella's dream is that he'll play with the county someday. Playing with the county and wearing the county jersey is a big thing for any young fella. But at the same time, you never kind of think about maybe to be lucky enough to win an All-Ireland. And when I say lucky, I mean I was lucky. I was lucky that I came along at a time when there was a great team in, in Galway and had won two All-Irelands. I adore that team. Probably my best friends still were on that team. The one thing that they always wanted to do, no matter what kind of a game it was, they wanted to go out and win it. Because what I felt at that time is that you were never playing for yourself. You were always playing for your supporters and for your county. That's the attitude those guys had. And there were people that you felt that you could never let down. And I think that made that three in a row team, that each one of them felt they couldn't let the other person down. A free kick brings Galway a point. The game is watched by nearly 80,000. And as time begins to run out, everyone wonders if Galway can notch their second win running, something they have never done before. Galway win 12-9 and receive the trophy from Alf Murray, the association president. The greatest thing for me in the letter that I felt that I had achieved something for my own father because he gave me the love for football that I had. And whereas I wished he was there to see it, you know, I felt at the same time, well, that I have achieved something on your behalf. And that's the way I felt about it initially. Then, of course, the other, the, you know, the whole enjoyment of the thing then comes in and walking up on the stand and receiving the cup and all that and looking down at the sea of Galway people who were so happy down below. I mean, that was really my great memory. Those two great rivals, Galway, playing left to right, and Meath met at Crook Park in the All-Ireland Finals. And what a game it was, with Galway defending the title for the third year. They soon showed they meant to make it a hat-trick, when a pass to the centre found Cleary, who put them in the lead. We all wanted to wear the county jersey. That was the most important thing. I had been very lucky. I had come through minor, and we had a successful minor team in 1960. And uh, then went on to college, and I met so many of the lads there. So the vast majority of the lads on the team uh, were either had played minor. I believe that there were nine in all who had played minor in 59 and 60. They progressed on to the senior team of 1964. We did very little training in, as far as I can remember. We might meet once a week uh, during the period of the league, and that would be as much, and we would play our games. But we were playing club football as well, and I think that lifestyle was very much different too at that particular time. We came from rural Ireland, most of us, and those we didn't, they were, they were always fit um, in that um, our lifestyle was different. We didn't have cars, we had bicycles, and uh, the, many of the fellows would have worked in what they call the bog today, and they would have footed turf, and various other 
other things. So we were physically fit. And I think that whilst our diet wasn't as, perhaps as good as it is today, in fact, that we certainly didn't have too much to eat. And for that reason, very few of us would have put on any excess weight. We did have great comradeship in the sense that uh, we played our games, we talked to one another, we played cards together. I think that one of the great reasons for this was that we had a trip to America in 1965. We were there for, I think, about two weeks. I believe that that really gelled the team in that we were living together and uh, that definitely built up the comradeship and that has lasted to this day. The pleasure we give to people, and I have heard that now for many, many years, how people keep on saying that um, ye gave us great pleasure in those days. But it was a great time to be around. I'm one of the lucky ones, it's as simple as that, in that I arrived in the team in 64 at the time when the team was winning. But I was only one small part of a, a damn good machine. But they were great players on that Kerry team, despite not winning all Ireland's like the Mick O'Connell, Mick O'Dwyer, Niall Sheehy. All them fellas were all great footballers, but we were better, I think, on the day. And there are they are great memories, like in the sense that, um, you know, we didn't have the, um, the sadness of losing in the sense that we went through those three years in Croke Park without losing an important match. But you don't appreciate winning unless you have suffered a loss. In fact, the losing of the 63 All-Ireland final may brought about a, a toughness in the team and a will to win and saying, we're not going to be beaten again. So I think that was very much the strength of our squad at the time. When I was a young fella, my neighbours around used to always say, you'll never be half as good a man as your father. Let's see, I said. My father was very keen on the football. We would travel all over the country watching. Now, we didn't go to as many matches as I would have liked because my father was a very hands-on working politician. And sometimes there'd be a stream of people to see him and we couldn't go. So my father influenced me a lot. And I wanted to play for Galway. I always did. I brought my father to Crow Park that day. He wasn't looking that well. So. And to what happened, we've all got heart problems. I had a five bypass myself. I, I'd probably be dead only for it. And if, probably if he had something like that, he, he would be all right. But my father was a huge influence on my life. And, uh, and I'm sure it was much the same with my brother. At the end, Galway win 15-10. Their captain, John Donnellan, goes up to receive the Sam Maguire Cup. He doesn't yet know that his father died while watching the game. Tragedy and triumph on the same day. I knew growing up that I was a bit better than the other young lads around the area. I wanted to win all Ireland's with Galway. Remember, I would be training at 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock mass on the way up from training, and down at 7 o'clock in the evening again. I was a total fanatic. No smoking, no drinking, nothing like that. In 1963, I was picked left half forward on the Galway team in the All Ireland final, playing on a man called Des McCain, and he almost put me into the next world with the first salute. He hit me a punch in the side of the head. There's a bone in my eye that's still there. I must kill me. I'm rolling around. There's blood all over the place. This was before the match started. I should have been taken off the field straight away. He never played football after it. Obviously, it affected himself. He intimated that it wasn't his idea that this should be done. It was someone else's idea. The ironic thing about this was, about 20 years ago, Des McCain sought me out, and he apologized to me. This is exactly what he said. Certain things happened that day that shouldn't have happened, and I'm sorry. I put my hand on his shoulder. And I said, it's water under the bridge, the best to look to you. 